Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. You know, I have a CNC machine in my shop and the one thing that I just absolutely can't stand is when I walk up to a CNC machine that has a 40 inch wide table and somebody's only making one piece the size of a postage stamp on that machine when there's 500 pieces to make. So one thing you got to do when you have a production equipment like that is work smart. I need to turn this particular blank into a handle that looks exactly like this and I need to do it in a very short period of time because I have a lot of them to make. Now naturally there are details that go on the top and bottom of this handle that are a little difficult to access from a flat setup but the one thing you don't want to do is do all of these pieces from one side take them all out, load them all back in, put them back in, do the other side. Now the one thing you can look at and realize when you see a part like this are the common features from side to side and those would be the common tools in the setup. This particular part has a large countersink, it has a radius, and it has a fly cut surface. So that would be a guaranteed three common tools from side to side. And naturally you have a profile tool and an end mill or whatever you're going to make these holes with. These holes are interpolated because I use these holes for fixturing at a later time. When you produce a part like this through the magic of video, that's what the first op blank looks like. You can do this entire part right to this stage, right here, in one setup. Now the other side, as far as the other side is concerned, this particular gripping material falls within the band of material to be removed by this radius. So if this is 200 thick and this is a 250 radius on the edge, well there's no need to deck that whole thing off because it's going to go away when the radius cutter comes around and cleans it up. Those would be common tools. Now the ideal setup, or the ideal production run for a part like this, would be to open the door of the machine and pull one complete part out, like this, every time you open the door of the machine. Why bother reloading something for a second op if it's common tools, the tools are already set up and the machine is sitting in front of you just begging to be uh, loaded up. But what you want to do is take the first op part like this, roll it into the second op fixture alongside the vise, and load another blank in. When this particular process is complete, you're going to have this piece on the left, and this piece on the right, and when you open the door, this piece comes out finished, this piece goes over here, and a new blank goes over here. So it goes left, right, out the door, left, right, out the door. So every time you open that door, you get a finished part. That is absolutely the most optimum way to do something like this. You could probably also do this in a giant sheet and do them all in a row, but then you have a bandsaw operation in between setups, and that might be a little confusing. This particular part, I've got several of them here in process, and I'll actually take you over and show you the setup. It's pretty cool. This particular part is the grip handle on the underwater dive platform that we sell here and this is my new system that I'm going to release very shortly this is the G2 rack system at Advanced Innovations these are 1000, 1000 lumen Princeton Tech lights love them, they got a high setting a low setting and an SOS on these lights uh, rechargeable batteries in them a very cool battery, very cool rechargeable uh, you actually plug a mini USB charger right directly into the battery and then into your computer or USB receptacle. Nine positions for moving your camera around. Ten inches between the handles for nice big underwater uh, housings. We have accessory holes for lanyards, additional lights, tripods, whatever. And the whole system is absolutely fantastic. Love it. And if you're shooting something real close to the light, these arms are immediately adjustable to a variety of different positions. And believe me, when you get this thing in the water, all of these, all of these arms here are hollow, and it's almost completely neutrally buoyant. You can't let it go, and it's going to float in front of you. It will sink, of course, but that's what the lanyard slots are for. Tie it off to your BCD, and away you go. Anyway, back to the blocks. I'm going to walk you over to the machine. I'm going to run the cycle. I'm going to probably run the entire cycle and uh, accelerate the time, but you'll see what I mean about 
first stop results in this this turns into this and it's just a Congo line of parts coming out of the machine and it's a very efficient way to run a very uh, large number of parts anyway let's take a look thanks because of the limited quantity that I'm running on these not limited but smaller than a thousand piece production run of course I'm using two vices one vice is equipped with a jaw profile that's milled out to accommodate the, sh the net shape of the first stop. And the first side is just strictly a set of aluminum jaws with ridges milled into it so I don't have to use parallels. Let's pretend that this is mid-break and you just want to see how it's going to go. Let's change them over and push the button. I will accelerate the full product uh, cycle time so you don't sit there and get old as you're watching it. Just check it out. We're just going to flip them over, continue to run these until we run out of pieces. Great way to do it. I highly recommend it. When you have common tools, run two vices, first stop, second stop, every time you open the door, finish part. Good luck. <laughs> 